What is up everyone, welcome back to our lawn and welcome to one of the checkpoints that I do throughout the year here for my YouTube channel, Tracking My Journey, and that is a July yard walk around. Now I have done one of these every single year that I have had the channel and they are largely for me to track my progress. However, I will, as I walk around, talk to you about what I've done and how you can use any and all of that information in your own yards journeys. And I start here in the front yard, which now is finally after four years in just maintenance mode because the phased renovation is all complete. You can see last fall was phase four. Hasn't quite filled in the, the gap yet, but it'll get there, fill this gap in and you will never know that it was done in multiple phases. Now I talk a lot about not overseeding your Kentucky bluegrass because it's gonna fill in. And again, down below me here is an area that came in really bare. I can show you at the end of last year and where it is now side by side and you will see exactly why this Kentucky bluegrass will spread. Do not need to worry about it and it will fill in. Some things from phase four that I had problems with that I hadn't in other sections is I brought dirt in from other parts of my property that have not been maintained. And what that brought with it is a, a new set of weed problems. And I had in an earlier video that I was going to talk about how I was going to deal with the grassy weed problems. I'll still do that because it's still an effective uh, application to go out with. Unfortunately, my main problem ended up that I believe it's orchard grass, which really isn't affected by any selective herbicide. So what I did is I went through and I, I put the work in and I just hand weeded the worst section of that out and then we'll just kind of continue to monitor some of the other areas that are struggling a little bit but by and large super happy with it now when we go down to the road now people can see and really understand what sort of yard that I have here in the front so I did have some concerns in the front here that I was going to be struggling with this last section but I've sprayed out weeds you can see those dying in some spots I've pulled the ones that were the most offensive and it's starting to really even out now that we've got some rain it's looking pretty good one last thing for the front yard that you can look forward to is I am just randomly a applying Green County products that I have left over in this strip right through here. Basically weekly at rates. Um, I have some dethatch, humic 12, a little bit of aerate left, microgreen left, I think 402 left. And I'm just gonna burn through all that in this little strip of my yard here. It's about 500 square feet. And we're gonna see if it does anything. Over into the you can't do that section where I have real mowed at a height that it shouldn't be allowed to be mowed at that has fescue, tall fescues, all different sorts of random grasses in it, isn't leveled, isn't anything, and yet real mowed. And is one of my favorite parts of the yard. It is really starting to thicken up. I've had some weed pressure this year. Um, I probably will go to go back to using pre-emergence from now on. Down here, I have for the first time crabgrass problem. A ton of spurge came in. You can see it's all dying off. It's all the brown kind of spots back here. Those That's all just spurge dying off and I have from the fence back there to about here along the strip now finish the first top dress of this I got to get the rest of this front section at some point whenever I get the opportunity to do that so you can see that's kind of the the bare spots here are, are sand that are left however in through here really all it took this section always struggled right here underneath this cedar tree which I cut down and with that, it seems that it gets enough sunlight now where this can grow under here. This would have been pretty much bare around this time last year. And then the last bit to talk about in the front is this real mode section of the same Kentucky bluegrass that I have out in the front, which is really making me have to fight the urge to real mold my whole front yard. I can't do that. I shouldn't do that. But man, this stuff looks amazing into the backyard at large, which has kind of become the forgotten child. So this year I have taken a much more dedicated approach to the practice facility. And I have also this year started to go back on site, go travel for the week for my job again, which I haven't done since the beginning of 2020. And as you would expect, that robs me of a lot of lunches, robs me of a lot of time that I had when I was working from home, where I could come out and take a half hour and spray something, where I could come out and take a half hour and mow. So because of that, the backyard has been the chosen section where I haven't taken any time with it. It has gotten the same half pound of nitrogen and one or two iron app, iron and micronutrient applications that the front yard has. I left that out. We're on a half pound event only. And also Mother Nature has been very kind to me this year and I've only had to water three times for the season. But there's weed problems. Bent grass is doing bent grass things. This used to look even much worse. Um, it's come back since we've gotten some rain. Bent grass doing bent grass things. It looks terrible. I have weeds everywhere. I got problem grasses everywhere. And yet, really, if we look at it, most people would be pretty happy with this yard. 
But by and large, because of what's going on back here, at some point when we get there, we're gonna have to renovate all of this. So I'm kind of losing my desire to put a bunch of time, money and effort into the backyard when I'm just going to kill it all off likely at some point anyway, likely in phases much like we did in the front. And that brings us to the last thing to talk about, which is the putting green, which other than the areas that I went a little bit too heavy on my, top, on my sand top dress on the fairway, all of it is doing better than it ever has. So what have we changed? This year I'm at 3 16 of an inch and not 1 8 of an inch on the green, and that seems to be helping. I have also been watering more uh, religiously when it called for it. Basically I was watering every other day when during the hot stretch, and that made a huge difference over what I did last year when I was trying to water as little as possible. But even at 3 16 of an inch, it still rolls pretty well. It's a little bit slower, but I'd rather have, you know, an actual grass surface as opposed to the dirt that I had mowed in an eighth of an inch. The fairway is doing extremely well. This bit here, which was the new seed this year, I cannot tell you how excited I am to finally have this be grass and not the dirt circle that it's been for so long. But this stuff looks incredible. I'm super excited for the, the 007 and the flag stick. There's some bare spots that I'll need to fill in. I'm probably going to grab a pro plugger at some point and use that to kind of take from the thick bits and put it into the thinner areas but like I just can't even just this area which was the existing bent here just looks so good and it is functioned extremely well it works as a fairway I now have kind of set up a nine hole course that goes around in a circle around the green from back up by the deck and it swings all the way around and finishes with the ninth hole over the hammock but we've had some weed pressure in here those have been sprayed out and they should be on their way to death but i mean uh, basically now once i get my my tiller back this this section is going to get seeded next once that gets germinated then we move and we finish out and we'll have this whole area back here as a practice facility and once that's done then we get to prepping this site here for the the sport field that's kind of my plan now also, I still do have it in my mind as this expands that I want to bring the green out a little bit further. Get probably closer to a thousand square foot green. So this will kind of come out this way and then wrap back around just to get a little bigger putting surface. It's fine at 500 square feet, but I'd like to have a thousand. And so, yeah, I have kind of scripted in the plan for the practice facility and, and a video on like how, what, it, what it's like, what does it cost? What do you need in order to have a putting green in your backyard? Kind of a similar vein to the video that uh, John Perry and, and Jeremy did where they talked about about his putting green project and whether you should do it. I have a little bit of a different take on it because I'd use a different approach to get here and one that is much cheaper. And so there we go. That is the status of my yard here in 2022. As of July, it has been a very generous year for the from a weather perspective. So this has kind of been easy mode compared to last year. I haven't had to water as much. It's been much cooler. And uh, yeah, things are going generally well. I'm super happy. I've been playing a ton of golf back out here on the, on the golf course. Front yard looks amazing and is finally completed. Real mowing has been a true pleasure and joy both here on the practice facility as well in the side yard as we've made it to this point let me know with what i'm doing what questions do you have what sort of content would you like to see more of what sort of video topics etc i would love to see those in the comment section below give me some opportunities to talk about things that i'm doing how i can how i can transfer that information to you as best served for you for the questions that you have like the video if you enjoyed it thank you so much for following along to the journey that we're taking here in our lawn thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.